Hi everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Itai Shakuri and I'm with the open source team in Aqua Security. Today I wanted to talk to you about eBPF, which is an interesting Linux technology that we are using, uh, as well as everyone else in the industry. Um, and you probably heard about it or will hear about it. And I want to give you a very brief introduction to eBPF. So what is eBPF? It's basically a way to extend or customize the Linux kernel. There's a very famous saying that eBPF to Linux is the same as JavaScript is to HTML. Because uh, we've had HTML um, as a way to statically define web pages. And uh, like what happens now if I want my business logic to run when someone clicks a button? We have JavaScript for that. In the same way we have eBPF to um, express our intentions for several uh, subsystems in Linux that supports and, and accept this as an input. Uh, the, two, uh, the two big areas in Linux that currently supports eBPF is one, uh, networking. So think about packet uh, filtering. This is where eBPF started. Packet filtering, um, packet um, inspection, routing, and so on. And the other area is instrumentation. So things like if you want to look into the system, what it is actually doing, you could hook into uh, points in the kernel uh, and, and get information from there. We are using this actually in Aqua. Uh, we are instrumenting the system and then running uh, untrusted software on it to see what it is really doing behind the scenes. And that way we can ad identify uh, malicious behavior uh, for uh, software and so on. So how would you uh, use eBPF today if you wanted to? You basically write uh, your eBPF program in C. Uh, well, actually it's restricted C because um, there are very strict safety requirements from uh, eBPF programs because uh, naturally we, we load them into the kernel. This is the most critical part in our system, the kernel, and we want to be 100% sure that this is not intentionally or by accident doing something uh, unwanted. So you can do even basic things like loops, memory allocations, uh, jumping to a bureau you want. You cannot do this. This is why it's restricted C, it's not regular C. Uh, but you can express your business logic usually if it's, if it's concise and short. Uh, then you would ask the kernel to load this program and, and attach it to uh, the the functionality that you want it to react to. This is a this is a an, a major oversimplification of how it works, really. But uh, just so you get the hang of it, you write your program in restricted C, you load it into the kernel, then you attach it to somewhere in Linux that expects it. There's a very um, useful project that is called BCC, the BPF Compiler Collection. Uh, this is a collection of tools and helpers. Uh, I would even call this an SDK for developing BPF uh, programs uh, because, for example, if you write in Python, you could use BCC to write a, a BPF program uh, and BCC abstract, abstracts away all the, all the annoying details of working with uh, BPF. So it's highly recommended to, to start by looking at, uh, at BCC. Also, BCC has a collection of useful tools uh, like ready to use command line interface tools that uh, you can just run on your system and these tools are built using uh, eBPF. So uh, it's also um, a useful collection and tools of tools and also a good way to learn about eBPF. So uh, let's look at, at an eBPF program. Okay, so this is the BCC project that I mentioned. You can go to GitHub, IOVisor, BCC, and check it out, read the readme and get started. I chose a simple program to look at. This is the PySnoop tool, which uh, basically just shows you all the file open operations on the system. So uh, let's look at how it is being done. So this is so far just um, command line argument parsing and so on. Uh, this is uh, where it starts to get interesting. This is where they define the, the C program that um, this is the BPF uh, program itself. Uh, they chose to do this as an inline string in the Python. I guess uh, it worked for them because it's it's pretty simple program, but you could also uh, author this, uh, this program in a separate uh, file. Um, 
down there uh, we can see that uh, this is where they actually start to use the, the BCC library. They create a BPF class and give it the, the text, which is the C program that we defined uh, just before. And uh, this basically loads the program into the kernel and now we attach it. So uh, we basically say whenever there's a system call uh, of open, just call my callback here, which is the function that we defined earlier in C. This function basically just collects the data, right? And the rest of the Python program just uh, processes this data and uh, prints it out into the, to the user. So let's look at this program in action. So uh, we can run this OpenSnoop program. It will start listening to events. And in this uh, window, we can just uh, do something. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot more um, things happening that, we, that you might have expected. I remind you that this is Linux and as expected, everything is a file. So um, we have a lot of files being opened at any given time, but if you do something more um, conventional, like really opening a file, you can see our open here that cat just opened the test.sh file. All right, so this has been a very quick introduction to eBPF. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and look forward to other videos from us. Thank you.